Welcome, Red Ice members. Thank you for tuning in and uh, thank you for being here. Glad to have you along here today. We have John Lash with us and we are continuing our excellent discussion. We've been uh, talking very much about uh, entheogens and the connection to uh, religion in our first segment. And we are going to continue in a way on that theme, but, but slightly change gears a little bit. We're going to talk about a, a discovery that uh, John Lash made about a, a year and a half ago. And this is about um, the Edwine Psalter, uh, and, and I'm going to let John set the, the proper context uh, for us about what, what this is about and, and his discovery and so forth. It's a very interesting subject, and, and uh, there's mu- much to dive into here. So, John, if you will, tell us a little bit about Edwine, Edwine Psalter and, and this, the discovery that you made. Certainly, it's my pleasure to do so, and I'm delighted to be here on Red Ice Creations talking about this, because uh, although I've written uh, five or six pieces about it on the website, uh, I haven't really spoken about it publicly yet, and I must say that I've been fortunate in my life to make a number of discoveries. Uh, I'm a self-taught person. I didn't go to the university or anything like that, and I encourage all of the others of you out there who who are self-taught to continue um, and it can be very rewarding. You don't need a degree behind your name. You don't need to be approved by a university to discover some very fantastic things, whether they might be in biology, in in art, uh, in religion, in science, or whatever. I've been extremely fortunate. I've made a few discoveries in my life. And the most recent one has been this manuscript, which is called the Eadwine Psalter, now, a Psalter, P-S-A-L-T-E-R in English, is just a name for a prayer book, okay? Mm-hmm. And the name Eadwine is a medieval name, and it really means a generous friend. And it's a name that was sometimes given to certain kings and certain uh, important social people uh, in the Middle Ages. So this Eadwine Psalter is a prayer book that was... Um, let's say, sponsored by a person called Eadwine. That is to say, when such a prayer book was made, it was made, uh, copied by monks in a scriptorium. It was quite an expensive venture to prepare the paper and everything. And so in order for that uh, project to be done, it had to have a, um, uh, a sponsor, and so it's named after the sponsor. Mm. The technical name for this is called uh, the Paris Latin Manuscript 8846. And it exists in the National uh, Library in Paris, and there is only one copy of it in the entire world. Hmm. So let me just say a little bit about how I discovered this Edwine Psalter, and then and then we'll talk about the the amazing contents of it. Hmm? Yeah, I started writing about entheogens and magic mushrooms and things of that sort on Metahistory Org uh, for you know two or three years now. I've been doing that, and I think it was a couple of years ago when I was writing my book, Not in His Image, that I was on one of the many entheogenic sites uh, on the Internet. I think I was on, actually, entheogen.com. And uh, I came across this image, uh, which showed a, uh, a sort of a cameo, a round circle, and inside that round circle, it was obviously from an illuminated manuscript of the Middle Ages, and inside that round circle was... Uh, the figure uh, supposedly of Jesus Christ, he had a robe on, a halo, is holding his two hands up with his palms outward. And in the lower part of the circle uh, where he was depicted, there were four distinct mushrooms, very clearly botanical species of mushrooms. They weren't designs, they weren't anything you could mistake for something else. And there were four kinds. There was a white one, a kind of pale gold one, a blue staining one, and a red one. And I recognized by the form of these mushrooms in this little cameo image that they were botanically uh, identifiable species. So whoever had drawn this uh, manuscript, whoever had painted it or illustrated it, was actually drawing them from nature. And I was really kind of shocked by this to see these botanically, uh, they were specimens that you might even find in, uh, drawn as they would be in a, in a botany book or a science book. Mm. And here they were in, a, in, this, uh, religious, uh, in this religious document, you know. Mm. Well, 
at the time that I first came across that image, uh, the only illusion, there was no commentary on it on the website where it was given, and the only illusion that it made was it said, the Canterbury Psalter. Mm. So after a while, I, I was busy doing other things, and at a certain point, not too long after that, I decided to go investigate the Canterbury Psalter. And I went on Amazon.com, and I found out that a book called The Canterbury Psalter, uh, uh, or the Eadwine Psalter, from Canterbury could be ordered, and that uh, you could get it for like 85 euros, and so I ordered it. I thought, oh, this is fantastic. I'm not only going to have this whole, I'm going to have the whole Psalter, I'm going to find this... Uh, picture that I saw on the web, on the internet in there, and, and maybe I'm going to find some more interesting illustrations in there. Mm -hmm. Well, when I got this book, I found absolutely nothing at all. There were no mushrooms, there was no, the image that I had seen on the internet was not in there. And so whoever had posted that image had wrongly identified the source of it. Mm -hmm. It, was, it is not in the Canterbury Psalter. The Canterbury Psalter is a prayer book that's kept in Trinity College in Cambridge in England. Right. So that really left me with the question, well, if this doesn't come from the Canterbury Psalter, where did it come from? And that's when I proceeded to do more research. And uh, I won't go into all the details, but my research led me, finally, to one manuscript, one book that exists in Paris. It's called the MS8846, and it's called the Paris Eadwine Psalter. And so finally, uh, I think it was a month after my book came out, my book came out in November of 2006, right? And that December, I was back here in Europe. I took the Euro the Thales train to Paris. I went to the National Library. I joined the library so that I could go into their special manuscripts room. Mm -hmm. And I filed a document to look at this manuscript. Now, you cannot look at the actual manuscript because it's kept in a sealed vault, but they have a microfilm. So I sat in a microfilm booth, and I proceeded to scroll down this manuscript. It's a long, it's a book of some uh, 175 pay, 184 sheets, or 367 pages, so it's a quite a large book. Yeah. And each page was on this microfilm. And I have to tell you that sitting there in that booth in that National Museum, National Library in Paris was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. I could not believe what I was seeing. First of all, I found the original little image. Uh, it turns out that some of the illustrated pages of the Eadwine Psalter, about, I think, 10 of them, consist of kind of panels the whole page is a panel with 12 little sections in it. Mm -hmm. And these sections show images of Jesus Christ and of the various saints. And they show images from the book of Genesis, events that happen in, that are described in the Bible, and of some events that are described in the Psalms and in the New Testament, things like the baptism in the Jordan and so forth. Right. So all in all, you would think, well, I'm looking at a fairly typical illuminated manuscript, painted in very vivid colors, dating from about 1200. And this is a typical product of Christianity because it illustrates these scenes from the Bible and so forth, mm -hmm. the Old and New Testament. Mm -hmm. Well, that is exactly what the Paris Eadwine Psalter is. But the extraordinary thing is about 75 of the illustrations are of psychedelic mushrooms elaborately depicted in many different forms yeah. and uh, in, in very exact form. And so in a sense, I would say that it is a psychedelically illuminated manuscript. Right. So, I mean, you mentioned that this was from the, uh, the, tw the 12th century, is that right? Yeah, it's about 1200, yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit more, if you know, uh, about the origins of this thing. Who, who who did it at the time? Do we know? Any idea about that? Well, I'll tell you that that is something that scholars don't know very much about. Uh, the There is a second name for this Paris Eadwine Psalter. It is sometimes also called the Anglo-Catalan Psalter, mm -hmm. Anglo-Catalan. 
And uh, I'll just read you what it says here about it in one of the uh, documents that I found on the Internet, which is from the Church Times, which is an online magazine. Mm -hmm. It says, This Psalter, also known as the Anglo-Catalan Psalter, was made in Canterbury around 1180. It was left unfinished, and around 1200 it was taken to Catalonia in Spain, perhaps as a gift. In the middle of the 14th century, the decoration of the manuscript was completed by Catalan artists, probably working in Barcelona. Hmm. Now, that's about all they know about it. Now, the fact that it was started in England uh, probably uh, has to do with the name Eadwine, which is a an Anglo-Saxon name, yeah. an English name. Yeah. And so it would seem that there was a sponsor, maybe a a priest or someone of a high position in the church, or maybe a social person, who commissioned this illuminated manuscript. And then for some reason it was interrupted, taken to Spain, and then it was finished, and it, it, it took another 200 years to finish it. Oh my. This is about all that we know about it. But there is the fact that it was interrupted is a very interesting detail. Hmm. Because when you look at the microfilm, you have, as I say, 184 sheets of paper. So you have recto verso, right? Yeah. Front side and back side. Hmm. You have actually about 360 pages. But only the first 100 or so pages have these elaborate mushroom illustrations. Hmm. So assuming that the manuscript was drawn sequentially, in other words, that it was made starting from the first page and, uh, and second and third and in that direction, it would appear that it may have been interrupted precisely because it had these mushroom images in it. Exactly. Because after you go to page 100 or so, there are no more images and it becomes a completely conventional illuminated prayer book. Huh. Really? So my guess is, and, and I'm just guessing, and no scholar has written any comment on, it, on this at all, is that the people who began it in England were able, for some reason or other, to put in this elaborate mushroom imagery. And uh, if, if uh, your listeners go to my website and they go to uh, some of the uh, titles like The Discovery of a Lifetime, is one that shows this imagery. Another one is called uh, The Mystic Jesus, and I'll talk about that in just a moment, mm -hmm. which is an extraordinary, shows some extraordinary images from the Psalter uh, regarding mushrooms and other things like that. Uh, it appears that the people who started it had perhaps a knowledge of some kind of mushroom cult connected with Christianity or hidden behind Christianity. Mm -hmm. For instance, one of the images you see in the Eadwine Psalter is very clearly Christ standing with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and handing them a psychedelic mushroom. <laughs> oh it's not an apple. It's not a flower. It's not something that you have to squint at and pretend. It's, this is nothing like the Da Vinci Code business. Right. <laughs> where, you know, you have to speculate and you have to say all these things are hidden. There is nothing hidden. It is absolutely blatant and is so vivid. And so apparently the people who began the manuscript had the freedom to do that, mm -hmm. and they had the knowledge of what they were doing. But then, for some reason, their work was uh, interrupted, and uh, from that point on, uh, there was no more. The people who took up the completion of it did not continue with this bizarre kind of imagery. Hmm. Is there any commentary in regards to what the Psalter is about uh, in, the, in the library? This is another thing that is really amazing. If you want to talk about a classic case of intentional oblivion, 